In our experiments with optical bench in the lab, we have been finding out focal length of lenses and mirrors. One challenging mirror is a convex mirror because it does not give a real image. So let us see how we can find the focal length of a convex mirror in the lab. For this, we will require a convex lens, an optical bench, suitable uprights, two pin holders because we will be working with two pins in any case. Let us understand what is the principle that we will work on. Now we know that if we have a circle and if we have any radius drawn to any point on the circle, it is a perpendicular to that point. Likewise, if you have a spherical surface like that of a convex mirror, if you take any line from the center of curvature of that sphere to any point on the sphere, that will be a perpendicular. Now, as a rule, all rays that fall on any surface normally or perpendicular to the surface at the point of incidence are going to retrace their path. That means reflect and go back in the same direction. So how are we making use of this idea is what we are going to look at here. We will create a certain object, allow the light to fall through this particular lens onto the mirror surface. If we are able to get the image formed at the same location, that means the rays are retracing their path. So if I draw a ray diagram for you, it will look like this. You have a convex lens and an object. You place a mirror behind such that you are able to get the image back at the same point. This means the rays would be coming from its center of curvature. Also, for the ray that is passing this lens, the refraction will cause it to reach the same point. And therefore, by removing parallax between the image of that particular object as seen through the lens, by using another pin, you can find out that location. The distance between the mirror and the pin that you are using to remove parallax will give you radius of curvature. And half of that radius of curvature would be the focal length of the convex mirror which you cannot normally find out because it only forms virtual images. Just to make this point clearer, I am using a candle. I light it in front of this combination. Check out if the image is formed in the same location. Please observe how this image is formed at the same point because this particular screen is held right there. Adjustment of the mirror will help us get that particular location which will ensure that the rays after refraction from the convex lens fall perpendicular on this convex mirror so that they would retrace their path and make an image at the same point as the candle. I am making this slight adjustment so that you can see this properly. As an experiment therefore, what are the readings we are going to take? What kind of observations that we require to take? First and foremost, we must find out the rough focal length of this convex lens. Why we need that is because now you are going to place the object pin, this we are taking as object pin, in front of this convex lens at a distance between f and 2f. Why are we doing that? Because that will give us an enlarged image far away beyond 2f which will give us more room over here. And as we do that, it will allow us to take this particular convex mirror in between to get the image as required by us. Obviously speaking, this space should be more than what the radius of curvature is. 
So the choice of what focal length of the convex lens should be taken has to be made consciously by thinking and trying and finding out what is the most suitable for this combination. Let us do our experiment, make our observation table. What readings we will take? Position of the object pin, position of the lens, position of the convex mirror and this position would be the position of the image pin. Heights of these should be adjusted so that you work on a single principal axis. The scale attached here will be used to measure the distances. So we need to just find out the radius of curvature of this particular mirror. So first reading to be recorded is focal length of convex lens. Do the index correction to find if the uprights are vertical or not. If there is any error, account for it. Next, in your table as we have said, first column would be position of the object pin, second column position of the lens, third column position of convex mirror and the fourth column for the image pin. So, first and foremost, after keeping this here, we remove parallax between the pin and its image. So, we have to look at the pin, see the image formed by the mirror which would be formed at this point. So, by gently moving this backward and forward, we will be able to remove parallax between this pin and its own image as seen after refraction and reflection from the mirror and again a refraction from the convex lens and formed here. After doing this adjustment, make a note of these values, the position of the object pin, the position of the convex lens and the position of the convex mirror. Next what we are going to do is, we do not know where the center of curvature is. So, we are going to remove this convex mirror from here, allow the rays to go after refraction in this direction, use our image locator pin and remove parallax this time between the object pin and this image locator. Now what will we do? We will make a note of this. The difference between these two is the radius of curvature for our convex mirror and half of that will give us the value for this. How many readings should we take? We cannot be so sure with just one. So what is uh, to be done is change this value slightly, readjust the entire system again, find a new value for this. This value will come out to be the same because the radius of curvature for the mirror will not change. And therefore, do at least three readings, find an average of the value for radius of curvature, half that to get the value for focal length. Uh, report your result. What are the sources of error? The sources of error will largely be the same as in any optical instrument, which would be that whether you are able to remove parallax accurately, whether these uprights are straight or not, for which you are going to use your index correction or end correction and apply that for each of the values of object distance, image distance, separation between these, all that can be done. Suggestion for project work, what project can you do by this apparatus or with this idea of using the convex mirror? You can use mirrors of different curvatures, check out whether the radius of curvature can be found by this method or not. You can uh, relate it by creating a surface with different curvatures, do the same experiment, see if you can remove parallax at all or not. These little projects can be done in the lab using the same apparatus.